it's at the top but there are a surprisingly amount of very attractive looking it will not hurt her conservative no not Coulter conservative yeah. women that talk on Fox News but I think they're selected to try to get more of the female vote to vote Republican no, it's the sexual aspect. We're slick. It's the same thing when you see a woman selling a car. That's with, what that's with, big, all about. with big breasts. That's what that's all about. Car, car dealers, yeah. Roger Ailes knows that. You mean to get to get dudes to watch? That's correct. I got you. That's like great. like the Latin new, news programs and talk shows and. You know. Telemundo. Telemundo, yes. Uh, but they they they're not shy when it comes to showing cleavage <laughs> on the Latin stations. But it's for ratings. T and A. For ratings um yep. you know but they are uh it's just amazing how they spout such anti women views such no, big they such do. bigoted views they huh? do such anti women work and, and they're they get away with it okay well they're obviously corporate whores, corporate suck-ups, sycophants, well, they get away with it because of the religious aspect. They're the well. Democrats are re, are demons. They are baby killers. You think maybe second are humanists. You think maybe they say these things because they have a very well-paying job that's paid for by sponsors. No. Or do you think they do believe that. what they say? They believe it while they're on air. Right. That's what I mean. That's what I just said. All right. Well. When they're on the air. So they're sick, they're corporate suck-ups. When you take anybody who has a corporate job, yeah. what does it take to have them stand up for their right within such a situation? It take, takes a special person. That's correct. Would why do you think... Independent, free-thinking mind. Why do you think unions are going down the drain? Okay. You know, I don't know. I, that puzzles me. We need unions more than ever today. That's correct. But the big corporations have so much power. Mm -hmm. Unions don't have the power anymore. But you cannot stop all the employees in a company. Yes, you can. From collectively saying. There's a law that you can do that. That they can do that. The the one to start it, but the, they override the law. Go down south, and you'll see it. There's not, happens all the there's time. not a law that says you you can't uh, you have the right they can't make somebody roll out of bed in the morning and show up for work if they all decide not to show up for work at once yes, and strike can. how you ain't got no job they'll what? bring in the scabs what are you talking but about they got to bring in the scabs awfully quick well whatever your jobs are not secure today you we're in a situation. Because of the economy and the job market. We're in a situation where the company does not really need you. Because this if you go, if they don't want you, they don't like you. You want to stand up for yourself. You want to do things. They they'll get somebody else so quick. It'll make your head spin. Because there's so many people out of work. That's well. That's correct. And then you got the people overseas. And there's more. You mean the H-1B uh, workers' visas? They they import. Or just take the company overseas. We don't have to stay here. Go! We got the power and the money to go elsewhere don't, and make our product. Don't let the door hit you in the ass. Yeah, but the point Who's is... Who's going to buy their products over there? That's not the issue. They don't make much money. The issue is we have allowed the private sector so much power in in uh, 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 providing us with jobs. Our survival. Because they Our have, survival. Because they have bought off Washington. Whatever, but the thing of it is, you know, Ken Create can says go, to me whatever all the time. That annoys me. What do you mean whatever? How do you think they, they get? Because you don't have to really. Well, how you do don't you have to understand well, the why? Why? Why not? I thought because it's happening. I thought independent free thinkers are supposed to know why. Well, you can do that. You can do that on your own time. But when you're discussing the issues, it may not be irrelevant to know why it's happening. No, and it's intellectual to know why, sir. Yeah, if you want to stop it. But I'm just dis addressing the fact that it's happening. Well, it's happening because 
they can do what they do. They're allowed That's to do correct. what they do. And who allows the corporations and to do who, what they do? Who is going to stop Politicians. Them? Well, maybe all the spineless people in America that don't have the friggin' testosterone to stop them don't want to stop them, but collectively the asses of the masses can stop things. No, they can't, because they can't make laws. They well, have representatives well, in the Congress. Well, they could sure not vote laws. for the two-party oh, system. Oh, yeah! You know how many people... Like what? Let's you, 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 know how many, you know how many of your liberal uh, buddies on, 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 on the internet still think the Democrats are, are the saviors? They're only the lesser of the two evils. That's all they are. It's yeah. still the two-party system. The people can't make law. No, they you, can't make law. What happened with Occupy Wall Street? You ever hear... You, you get any laws from that? You ever hear of uh, people that get educated and vote for a progressive independent instead of the two-party system? They're out there. Where? The media doesn't let you know who they well, are. Well, then how can you vote for them? Well, the two-party system is not the answer. Okay. So here we go with the why. Your why, okay? We're going to deal with your why. Deal with the why. You gotta change the systems. Well, the system is corrupt. That's correct. So now if you want to do things within that system, you gotta change it. Okay? But people uh, demonstrating do not make laws. Therefore, they can't change it. When Martin Luther King was parading and this, that, and the other thing. Uh, uh, did he change any laws? No. Not really. He made the people in the Congress ashamed or whatever, and they changed the laws. Now we have the Supreme Court coming along and changing the voting rights laws. So, back again. Back in the 60s, the Democrats that are supposed to feel your pain, they did not. They did not do. They, they did dictated. not, on their own, uh, put in the civil rights laws. It took a Martin Luther King, and and right. his people to pressure them to put the civil right. rights laws in in uh, in place. You are misreading something. The Democrats are supposed to think it out on their own. There were no Democrats per se back then. They were Dixiecrats, and they too did not like blacks. Was George Wallace? They were forced. Was George? By Lyndon Baines Johnson, who was a good guy, okay, to do that crap with the voting. Well, rights. L Lyndon Johnson kind of escalated the Vietnam War, so kinda, <laughs> kinda. But was George Wallace a Dixiecrat? Absolutely. Okay, you had the Dixiecrats. Absolutely, he stood in front of the goddamn university to keep the black out. What was what was his name? Uh, Medgar Evers? Yeah, so there wasn't, like that. there wasn't, there was nobody really on their side except Martin Luther King. Malcolm X also. The people. The people. Yeah. See, but at that time, you had people in government who could be shamed. We don't have that today. There's no Republican that can be shamed because he will immediately Hire a, uh, what do you call them firms that uh, now, uh, when you get in trouble, you hire them and they paint you as a saint. They, they, twist, they twist the truth. Yeah. They twist, not the truth, they, they twist the lie to sound like a truth. Um, PR firm, PR, like a public, public relations, relations firm. That's firm. And that's yeah. what happens. Then you come yeah. out smelling like a rose. Meanwhile, you're skunk cabbage. Ooh. Which, which stinks pretty bad, by the way. Oh, yeah. I know that uh, from a, as a kid. All right, let us sink our teeth into these readings, sir. Well, first, before the reading. We have to sink it. <sighs> you wanted to, uh, you asked me. Yeah. Some time ago, I, because some friend of yours. Yeah kept giving you a supposed scripture from the Bible. Yeah, a right-wing, a funda fundamentalist, uh, evangelical, born-again uh, individual that believes in the immortal soul and believes we will be raptured up in the sky. 
those that are saved will be raptured up and they will completely avoid and be saved from the great tribulation and you have some biblical he well flew, his, his biblical scripture that he supposedly uh, was quoting from the Bible was absence from the body is present with the Lord okay. which is his way of saying you see we have an immortal soul that will fly out of our body so that was his context Yes. Okay, well, I happen to run across that particular quote, and it comes from 2 Corinthians 5, 6, and 8. Therefore, we are always confident, this is Paul talking, by the way, knowing that while we are at home in the body, mm -hmm. we are absent, absent from the Lord. Now in that context, all that is saying is it is said many times throughout the Bible, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So while you're in your body, you can't come to the Lord, you can't see the Lord, you can't do anything with that. Okay? So it has nothing to do with what he was telling you, the context. It has nothing to do with an immortal soul or anything of that nature. Mm -hmm. And concerning uh, an immortal soul, there's Timothy 6, verse 16, where it is said that only Jesus has immortality. Now that doesn't mean that the Father doesn't and the angels don't. They do too. But he's talking of a man. He's the only man that was resurrected from the dead after three days and created immortal again. And the key word is only. Only. Of, of humans. Yeah. yeah. So he's the only of humans that is immortal. So we don't have no immortal soul. Okay? As the world gets warmer, People are more likely to get hot under the collar. Oh yeah. Scientists. Oh say. yeah. That, that's for sure. A massive new study finds that aggressive acts like committing violent crimes and waging war become more likely with each added degree. Definitely. People are uncomfortable all the time and, they, and they're easily agitated. Researchers analyzed 60 studies on historic empire collapses recent wars, violent crime rates, lab simulations that tested police decisions on when to shoot, and even cases where pitchers threw deliberately at batters in baseball. Now that's they, wrong. They found a common thread. They deserve to get punched out, those pitchers. Yes. What? The pitchers Do you see what happens every time a pitcher does that and everybody comes off the bench? If a pitcher if a pitcher deliberately hits the batter, that is a form of assault. So why isn't he thrown at it again? It hurts. It hurts. Why do they have to come off the bench and uh, because and chaos? because uh, the they want retribution? Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Not when people have their adrenaline is running high. Well, if their adrenaline is running high. Guess what? What? They do stupid things. So well, therefore, just throw out the pitch. Well, it doesn't... The empires come in right away, take over, and throw the guy out. Yeah, just like you if, uh, you know... Solved! If uh, the pitcher has uh, Vaseline, he's throwing sp spitballs, whatever, uh, 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 like Gaylord Perry used to have Vaseline on the hidden on his body, and he used to grease up the ball. That's cheating. Or somebody has a corked bat, I believe. Mm -hmm. You know, the umpire is a, is the official. That's correct. That keeps the law of the land in place. That's correct. But you know, uh, people are well now. It's like it's so Look, unethical with steroid use. When you got money involved, they, the big uh, the big uh, celebrity, etc. Nobody wants to make a decision. You see. Yeah, it's like, it's like, why does somebody 
who's been sitting on his ass all year like Alex Rodriguez and banging all those Hollywood starlets. Why must he get so much money from the Steinbrenners for doing that? Why? I don't understand. Well, that's what he. That's only what he's been doing the last year. I mean, he, he, all, he all his productivity was from steroids anyway, like like Barry Bonds. Same thing. How many years has he been producing? Mark McGuire, Jose Canseco. How many years has he been producing? Sammy Sosa. Oh, uh, he's been in. Well, he's in his mid to upper thirties, I think. Yeah, but how many years has he been with the Yanks? Well, he was with uh, oh, Seattle, Seattle Mariners before was he that. Was producing there? We don't know. Uh, he might have been, uh, but he's he was he was caught using. So yeah, but I'm saying back then he may have been worth his what is it sixty million a year or whatever. But well, this year, no. Well, if you're cheating, you are assumed that you were cheating for a long time. Yeah, but like the banks on Wall Street, if you're making sixty million a year, who cares if you're cheating? Well, they don't care. Well, no shit. And neither does Alex Rodriguez care if he's raking in all that money. But but the price of the tickets to see a baseball game, the, the fans care. They have to pay the... Well, that. that's why Alex is getting the... It's another one of those redistributions of the money upwards. Astronomical prices for baseball tickets. Okay. You know, that's I mean, uh, it's obscene. You're not that... He's not that productive. I mean, I mean, look... Remember, Babe Ruth had uh, the top year. I think was two hundred forty thousand bucks. That's right. Okay. Babe Ruth, uh, I mean, like Honus, uh, Lou Gehrig, Honus Wagner, Stan Musial, Ty Cobb. All of these guys. All these guys. Satchel Paige. You know, uh, uh, Jackie Josh Gibson. Robinson. Jackie Robinson, DiMaggio. The list goes on and on and on and on. Right. Even Maris and Mantle. Yeah, they didn't make They might have been, they, there's a good chance they might have been clean. I think they, they were. Yes, they were clean. You know, but and... we're uh, talking about the big bucks. They were not making right. nearly as much money. That's correct. And they were very productive. That's correct. Now, today... Bob Feller, the pitcher, yeah. Today, 240000 is probably equivalent to a million. Um, today. Ted Williams of the so Red Sox. even at... Another guy... Another. So even at that rate, you got your Alex Rodriguez. He's way overpaid. Can't way forget. overpaid. I almost forgot Ted Williams. Can't can't leave Ted him Williams out. Ted Williams can't. can't, can't, uh, can't what, leave. What, what was that pitcher? Uh, can't leave Twenty him game out. winner or can't thirty game out. winner? Thirty game winner. What's his Bob name? Bob Feller. Did I say? No, you no. said Feller. No, 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 no. Another no. pitcher. Yeah. 30 game winner what I believe. Era, what era are we talking about? Oh, uh, I don't know. I didn't follow that stuff. I just happen to know his name. Uh, uh, Gibson from the... Bob Gibson, Bob Gibson also, Gibson. but I think he only won 20 something or something. This guy won 30. 30? 30! Was he, was he the only on record 30 game winner? I don't think so. Not at that time. And it wasn't Satchel. Page, no, right? No, 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 no. He's after Satchel. He's after Satchel, probably in the 60s, 70s. Was he, was he, what team was he with, you know? I don't follow baseball. All I did, I became a fan with the Mets. Okay? I'm thinking That's about the it. pitcher. When Eddie Cranepool was with the Mets, I was a fan. They beat the Orioles based on a fluke. They were lucky. What, the other day? Because no. their record this year is crap. 1969 World Series. Oh. I'm trying to think of the picture you're talking about. Well, don't worry, it'll come to you. Okay. They found a common thread over centuries. Extreme weather, hot or dry, means more violence. Catfish Hunter, Jim Hunter. Catfish was good too, but when, this guy was... Not better. when he was with the Yankees, when he was with the Oakland Athletics, ah. Catfish Hunter. Uh, Jim Palmer or the Orioles? No, he didn't do it. This guy is well known, man. Absolutely well known. And he's, he was the. Just can't remember the name. And he's the only 30 game winner. No, I didn't say that. But he was a 30. I just game. happened to think that he, he did win 30 one year or whatever. All right, continue. When the weather gets bad, we tend to be more willing to hurt other people. Yep. That's Solomon Heizang. 
of the University of California, Berkeley. What a name. He is the lead author of the study published online Thursday by the journal Science. Science! Experts in the causes of war gave it a mixed reception. The team of economists even came up with a formula that predicts how much the risk of different types of violence should increase with extreme weather. Sandy Koufax! Oh, the Dodgers. Yeah! Sandy Koufax won that many games? I believe so, unless I am incorrect. Sandy Koufax and the other guy, Don Drysdale. But Drysdale, he was a, he was a hitter, man. right? He was a... Sandy Koufax, baby. Yeah, the, you can look him up online tonight and see how many he actually, you know, if he did have a 30 game season. That's back in the 60s. <clears throat> there you go. There you go. In war torn parts of equatorial Africa, it says every added degree Fahrenheit or so increases the chance of conflict between groups. Rebellion, war, civil unrest by 11 to 14 percent. For the United States, the formula says that for every increase of 5.4 degrees Fahrenheit, the likelihood of violent crime goes up 2 to 4 percent. Mm -hmm. Temperatures in much of North America and Eurasia are likely to go up by 5.4 degrees mm -hmm. by about 2065 because of increases in carbon dioxide pollution. Now, Michelle Bachman said there's nothing wrong with carbon dioxide. Really? Yeah. Of course she's going to say that. Does she breathe it in all the time? Somebody should put her in a closed garage with, with a car running. With only less carbon monoxide. Well, if we, if, 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 here's another thing. If she's in there and you don't have the car running and she breathes, there's no, uh, I mean, it's an airtight. Well, eventually she will die. The point is we need oxygen. Because of her carbon dioxide. The point is we need oxygen. That's yeah, it. That's correct. Plain and simple. The same paper sees global averages increasing by about 3.6 degrees in the next half a century. In one study, police officers in a psychology experiment were more likely to choose to shoot someone in a lab simulation when the room temperature was higher. Mm -hmm. In another study, baseball pitchers were more likely to retaliate against their opponents when a teammate was hit by a pitch on a hotter day. Interesting. Okay, that's it for that reading? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, getting back to the uh, baseball and steroids, they do not, and I repeat, they do not deserve to be in the Hall of Fame because steroids, sports enhanced, in, uh, enhancing drugs, is cheating. Maybe they should have a Hall of Shame. Well, they are inducted into in the Hall of Shame right now, all those guys. Even Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire, who supposedly passed up Roger Maris's uh, uh, record of 61 home runs. They were juiced. They were juicing. Uh, uh, I don't... And not, I, and not like Gary Noll. No, Barry <laughs> Bonds did not technically... I mean, numerically, yes, but he cheated. I don't consider him uh, the ho home run king. I still consider Hank Aaron the real home run king because Bonds juiced. What was Aaron? Uh, 600 or 700? No, 700. 700 four, four, no, no, that was Ruth is 714. Aaron is 700 and no, whatever. He's above that. Yeah, anyway, it's time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch, and we're going to take a break. We'll be back. And that's